Hi, I'm Sean from GoPower, and this is the unboxing of the GP PSK80, uh, and it's actually virtually the same for the PSK120 as well. So we'll start by opening the box. So it comes in this nice little carrying case here, little suitcase. Unzip that. Our solar module. Let that guy go on the floor. And we'll open up the folding panel. So inside we have we got lots of different connectivity inside this. Uh, first of all, we have a 15 foot uh, extension. Uh, so this basically it's an Anderson connection. It would go on to the panel here. You connect that on just like that. And then we got 15 feet, we can move the panel away from whatever battery we're connected to. And we have a number of connections in here. So you'll notice uh, this extension cable has two Andersons on it. And that's so we can do our different connectivity to the battery. So here we have your regular alligator clamp style that we can go onto any terminals of, uh, on a positive and negative terminal on a battery. We have this uh, XLR connection here. This connects to some of the pre-wires you see out there on RVs, uh, like the Furion connection. Uh, this will allow you to plug a GoPower kit right into our Furion pre-wired RV. Then this one here is the connection that you'd use to connect to uh, both the GoPower pre-wire on any uh, RV made at the OEM, uh, or even the ZAMP connection. Uh, even though the ZAMP connection says warning only use ZAMP, uh, the GoPower kit can plug directly into the ZAMP connection without issue and work just fine. And then finally, we have a hardwire style connection. So what you do with the ring terminals, you'd have these if you have your battery uh, battery set up on your RV or in your boat or anything where you don't want to be taking the battery out or taking the cover off You can hardwire these connections on and then you have your Anderson connection Sitting there ready to plug in to the solar kit when we're when we're ready to use it So plenty of connectivity on the unit and uh, Now we'll switch to another video here and give you a closer look at the controller that comes with this kit and how to set it up uh, and this is how you pull the legs out on the PSK. So it's just a wing nut here. You loosen that off, slide it out, tighten it up, and then you can lay the panel down. Okay, so just taking a closer look at the uh, back side of the panel here, uh, I wanted to show uh, why we have our PWM10 controller on a swivel. Uh, I also wanted to mention that we have a 10 amp inline fuse on the battery connection as well to protect all the wiring on this unit. So as you see, when we lay the panel down, we can bring the controller out so we can see how much current is going in and where the battery voltage is at at any given time. All right, going through the process of installing the PSK, obviously we'd unfold it, we pull it out of the box, unfold it, bring the legs out, and then we connect our 15 foot extension cable that came with the kit. So the Andersons connect together just like that, they're locked together, and we're ready to move down the line to the battery. Okay, the only thing left to do now is to connect the other end of the 15 foot connection here, or the 15 foot extension cable from the PSK. So that connects to, I've, ch I've chosen the alligator clip connection. So we simply go the negative post, connect to that, to the positive post here, and now you've connected. So that's probably the easiest way to, to connect to the battery. Uh, and then we'll go through the other different options you have. All right, using the ring terminal connections, basically, obviously we got our ring terminals on. I always connect the negative first. So you get less of a spark from the battery when you connect to them. And the reason you'd use a ring terminal now is if this battery was in uh, a cover or in a compartment where I can't easily access this, I can just simply use the Anderson connection, leave this here, put the cover on it, and then when I come to use my PSK, I just pull this cover off plug in our extension, and now the PSK is charging the batteries. So this is great in a fifth wheel where the batteries are tucked away, or if you obviously have a battery box covering it, you don't want to keep taking the lid off. So I wanted to show uh, a little bit of an example of exactly what's happening with the RV pre-wires and, and how you use the adapters to connect the GoPower PSKs 
to uh, any of the pre-wires that you get on your RV from the factory. So basically, GoPower and Zamp both use the same connection. Uh, it's this connection right here. Uh, there's a positive and a negative wire. Now essentially what they do is they're connected right to the battery. Now obviously it's a longer run of wires to get from this connection on the outside wall of the RV all the way to the battery, but that's essentially what is happening. So you'll see a GoPower one will just have a GoPower solar sticker above it. A ZAMP will say ZAMP only, uh, this is a ZAMP only plug. Uh, it isn't the case, they're the exact same thing with the same positive and negative. You're not gonna void your warranty or anything by plugging anyone else's solar kit into it. Uh, so the adapter that we use uh, that comes with the GoPower PSK, it simply plugs into this connection like so and now you're charging your batteries with the GoPower PSK, whether it's in the GoPower plug or in the ZAMP plug. All right, this is the Furion solar pre-wire. Uh, looks a little different than the first one we looked at there. It does work the same way where we got a positive and negative wire that's going all the way back to our batteries to the positive and negative. When you open this up, it's quite a different uh, adapter here. This is called an XLR. Uh, so the GoPower PSK comes with the XLR adapter so you can simply plug it into the Furion connection and now we're charging our batteries through the Furion connection. Okay, so we're going to connect the panel to the battery now. When we do that, we'll see the controller do a full startup, does kind of a self-diagnostics first, and then it starts off in battery voltage. So this is obviously what voltage we see uh, at the controller coming from the battery. Uh, if you hit the B button, you can cycle through, so this would show us current. So how much power or how many amps are coming from the solar panel to the battery at any given time? We're indoors, so obviously it's at zero right now. This is showing us the percentage of battery left, so it's saying we have 90% of our batteries left at this voltage. And then it's showing the amp hours, and this is an accumulation of how many amp hours has come in, have come in from the solar panel to the batteries over a given time. And then returns us back to the battery voltage. So to set the battery type, uh, this controller can charge three different types of batteries. You would hold the B button, and along the bottom line, you may not see it, but AGM is flashing right now. If you hit the B button, you can cycle through. So there's AGM, flooded, and sealed batteries. So sealed is like a gel battery. So I'm gonna set mine for AGM, how I set that, it's flashing at the moment. I hold the A button, and it locks in and it gives us a click to acknowledge it, acknowledge it locked it in. Then the other thing we can do here, which is kind of cool, there's a USB right on the solar charge controller. So we can plug the USB in for our cell phone. We can open our phone here. So I have it set to the battery app right now. It's at 83%. Uh, when you plug it in, it buzzes for us and it tells me it's charging now. And this USB can put out uh, 500 milliamps, so it can charge uh, the, the larger smart devices as well, like an iPad. So once again, this is Sean from GoPower, and thanks again for watching our video.